joy or happiness, success or failure, peace or dismay. The foundations of our life rest on the words we receive. A word of hope and guidance, translated from the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. You are listening to a word of faith with Bishop Macedo. Univer Video is your platform for Christian content, and it gives you access to the church meetings of the Universal Church around the world, and they are in English. Even the meetings at the Temple of Solomon that provide live, simultaneous translations to English. All you have to do is sign up. And this is how: visit www.univervideo.com online, or download the application on your mobile device, and complete the simple registration form. Have your bank card ready, and choose your terms of payment. And before you know it, you'll be up and running. Stay connected to the things of faith during the 21 days fast of Daniel. Hello, my dear friends. May you be blessed, and may you be free. May you be set free from all the burden, from your own problems, from all the anguish, and from this unhappy life. Because God has died on the cross to give us and to set us free from all evil, to set us free from all the burden of sin, and to make us free like a bird. He wants you to be free, free from the situation you are dealing with right now. He wants you to be a person that will glorify his name that will exhale his perfume. God, he wants to do exactly that. Believe in this and put it to practice, this faith. How can I practice this faith, you may ask? When you begin to practice God's word and obey God's word. From the moment that you begin to follow and practice and obey this word, which is God's voice, which is the voice of the Holy Spirit, then you will be able to experience, you will experience God's greatness in your life. But all this has a price, which is the sacrifice which is what we spoke about the other day. Faith without sacrifice is worth nothing. It does not work. You want me to prove it to you? Let me just remove here the scabs. All right. So, this is how it goes. You have faith. For how long have you been having faith? For how long I had faith? It doesn't matter the religion. For example, I was a Catholic, a Roman a Catholic, Roman Catholic. Sometimes I'll go to the masses and I would listen, but I couldn't understand because in that time, the masses was held in, in Latin. I couldn't even speak Portuguese properly. Imagine Latin. So, I left there and I got involved into the Spiritists, the white religion. I did many rituals and I had faith. I also believed in God. I not only believed in God, but also in the saints. And the, I had a very large belief in items or things. But all that faith, all that belief was worth nothing. 
because I continued to be in pain. I was a person who suffered. And then, when we began preaching the gospel, so I know what you are going through. I know the, the hard situations that you are facing because I also encountered with them. I also, I would take, I would take my lunch to work and eat at work and I would eat there for a very long time from the time that I would eat the work for myself. I lived that way. Be, I would also depend on the public transportation there in Rio de Janeiro and I would, take the, I would, I would ride the public transit. So I know exactly what you, what you feel, the feeling of this being despised. No one believed in me. No one. No one. My mother believed, obviously. My mother, her love was so great that she believed in that small being, that small despised being that I was. So I know what you deal with. I know what it is to be despised and be in anguish, have complexes. My complexes were great, were too great. The marks of my complexes are visible in my hands and there is no way to hide it. So I carry the marks of suffering that I endured in the past. But there was one day where I came across the intelligent faith. I came across the intelligent faith, the faith that demands sacrifice, which was the case of what we spoke, faith, faith and love. The two must be followed by the sacrifice. I came to know about faith and both, both, I had to sacrifice, I had to sacrifice and I did the sacrifice, but my sacrifices are nothing in comparison to the sacrifices that my Lord did on my and our behalf. So the sacrifice is like this, sacrifice, meaning the love followed by sacrifice, faith followed by sacrifice. For the world, for the world, faith, love, sacrifice, they, they don't know. Those who practice witchcraft, those who practice witchcraft, those who deal with the witchcraft, they know exactly what I'm speaking about. They know about faith with sacrifices than the Christians in a general manner. So, the sacrifice must be there must be matched with the faith and with love, love and faith, because it was the way that God chose in order to cancel sin from the world and from each and every one of us. When Adam and Eve sinned, God had to kill. That was the first death that came to pass was when God had to sacrifice a lamb to remove its skin and cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve. So there is no way to detach sacrifice from faith and of love.
or from love. But then there are those unbelievers, those Christians who are unbelievers, teaching Satan, saying that God's grace is enough and there is no need to sacrifice. So go ahead. If you don't make your sacrifice, go ahead. But those who want to learn to take possessions of the plenitude in life, they need to make the sacrifice. The example of the campaign that we have of the Ford of Jabbok, he needed to sacrifice. He needed to wrestle and give up everything in order to become Israel. So, he, for him to receive this new identity. And when, when Jacob, when, now it's Israel, no longer Jacob, but when Israel came to his brother, Esau, he said to him, Esau told him, I have everything, I have a lot, I have conquered, you are bringing me gifts, but I have everything. And Israel told him, but I have everything. I can also say that I have everything, but it wasn't free, there was sacrifice. The sacrifice for the world, it's craziness. It is, it is craziness. Paul speaks about this. He said that, that the message of the cross, the word that comes from the cross, the spirit of the cross that comes from the cross where Jesus died, it is foolishness to those who perish. So faith, the faith that comes from the cross, it is foolishness to those who perish, to those who are dying. Why so? Because it is a faith of sacrifice. So for how long, I, talking about myself, I, Edi Macedo Bezerra, how many years I lived in a religion, I had faith in God, and yet my life was unworthy, was rotten, my life had no flavor, no salt, no flavor, nothing. It was a life miserable and mediocre. Not that I didn't have the daily bread to eat because my father worked. He was a businessman and never, never we lacked anything on our table. But I, I, I'm saying in regards to our life, my personal life, the problems that I carried within me. So what was, what changed? It was this foolish faith, the foolish faith upon the Word of God. It was the foolish faith, the faith of sacrifice that brought and that changed my life. Because in order for me to reach the benefits of the cross, I needed to also sacrifice like the Lord Jesus did as well. God, He loved the world in such a way that He gave His only begotten Son. So, God, so the love followed by a sacrifice. And Paul, he says that the, that the word, the message of the cross is foolishness because sacrifice must be made. Don't think, ah, Oh God, give me this and it will happen. And God will make magic. No, God is not a magician. He gives us the word. It is through His word that He communicates with us and what we are to do 
and we learn the way of sacrifice so that we can then take possession of the promises of God. So understand, understand that if you do not, if you do not, if you're not born of God, and that will depend on you, a part of you and God. He speaks. If you obey, then he will work. So that, you can be, so that you can be born and be a new creature. But there must be the sacrifice. What is the wife or the woman that gives birth or who labors with no pain? There is, oh, I want to have a child. You will make sacrifices. Before you, you have the pleasure, but you have the pleasure. But when the child is born, you're going to have pain. And the pain is not, is nothing. This pain that you feel during the labor is nothing in comparison to the lifetime of that child. So sacrifice is part of life, part of faith. Because there are those who say, don't believe in those who say, oh, but Jesus did his sacrifice. And we don't have to do. So then look at their life. What is their life? Jesus died for you. You who, are, who say you are believe, ah, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And yet, what do you have? And I'm not talking about in, in matters of finances. No. Of a stable life. No. What do you have within you? What can you give? You are empty. You are depressed. Full of problems full of difficulties, with complexes of your own, you, you envy others, you envy the ones who got married ahead of you, you envy the one who has a better house, a better car, a better life, you envy, why do you envy? Because inside of you, because inside of you, you are poor, miserable, because you are conceiving in you, that Jesus did everything for you and that you need to make no sacrifice. But look at what Paul says. It, it reads, the message of the cross, the message of the cross is foolishness. And it is foolishness. It is crazy to this world. And you do things, exactly things that the world hates. The world hates sacrifice. The, the world hates sacrifice, and the devil hates sacrifice. And the devil hates once it is done to God. He hates it. If it's for himself, he loves it. But when you sacrifice to God, the devil hates. When you sacrifice to Abraham, to the God of Abraham, to the God of Isaac, to the God of Israel, that is when you take possession of God's promise. God wants to give you everything and not crumbs. He wants to make of you the blessing, the fountain, the spring of water. But you must give up. You must let go of your desires, of your wills, of your sins, mostly of your sins. You need to let go of yourself and put your life on the altar. Put all your life on the altar. Everything. Jesus went with everything on the altar. He gave 100% of himself. So how can he accept you partially? As we say, it is all for all. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who perish because the cross demands sacrifice. The cross is sacrifice. They were expecting, the Jews were, was expecting the Messiah to come in glory, dressed in beautiful robes and in gold. No, he came in a humble way, for he gave his life. And they were not expecting that. But God used the foolishness of this to give up his only son so that today 
we could have the right, the right, the privilege to have eternal life. But we also had to give. Give and receive. So you want to have a blessed marriage like mine, you must give up your will. You must do the will of the other person. That's sacrifice. The other person need to make, to let go of their will, to do your will. So there is a, an exchange of sacrifices. You sacrifice for her and she will sacrifice for you. So there must be this sacrifice if there is true love. If there is no love, no sacrifice. And with God is the same thing. If there is faith upon His word, so the person sacrifices. And if there is no true faith, so then the person fake to sacrifice. And that's why their life is unpleasant. So you will find, you will find inside the churches, even in the universal church, we have people like this that live a life terrible with no flavor. They know, they heard of Jesus. They, they hear the Bible. They are even tithers. But yet their lives, there is no plenitude. There is no life. A people that unfortunately are failures, defeated. They are the expression of misery. The expression of the spiritual misery. And misery in all the areas. And I speak like this. Forgive me. I'm not offending anyone or want to offend or to speak directly to someone. But I want you to be awakened. And for you to wake up someone, you need to shake this person and say, wake up. Because it's time to, to get up. And that's what God is trying to do. So I am trying to do exactly that. Because our desire is to remove this spirit of laziness, this spirit of laziness, of slothful, that makes you to be shut, to be imprisoned in, in an invisible cell that's called the cell of ignorance, spiritual ignorance. So open your eyes. God wants to make of you the blessing. Do you believe that? God wants to make of you the blessing as He did with Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. But Jacob only became the blessing after he had his identity changed. And that's what happened nowadays. The Holy Spirit brings forth a new creature. I am not the same person that was born from my mother or father. No, when I met Jesus, when I gave my life, when I gave up my life, and I finally, I understood and I surrendered my life, I sacrificed my life, and this sacrifice brings me fruits till today. 57 years, 57 years serving my Lord and I continue making sacrifices. I don't stop because I know that if I stop sacrificing, I will stop conquering. So our marriage, we had Esther, Esther and I, I to Esther, we had to sacrifice. And that's why we are going to complete 50 years by the end of the year. So, my dear friends, there is no true love if there is no sacrifice. There is no true faith without sacrifice. Think about it. And I'm not saying this for you to come and bring your money, your offering, your all and put on the altar. No, that is the least of all. For God does not need anything. But when you give everything on the altar, you are saying, God, 
I want to depend on you. I want to depend only on you. Either you are with me or I am lost. That is what God wants. So that he can then take over your life and make of your life an icon. To make of it a fountain. To make of your life the perfume of Jesus for the honor and glory of our Lord. So God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. A man of deceit, a cheat, and a man of many disguises, outlawed with a price on his head by his own brother who promised to kill him. Despite his many mistakes, God considered him for his tenacity to conquer the blessing that his brother despised. That was Jacob. Time went by and Jacob became a very wealthy man. Accounted to him were many children, servants and possessions. But he was still Jacob. The same person full of fears and conflicts. The vow made with God at Bethel ensured his success and gain and was responsible for everything he owned. But Jacob knew that all the wealth would not stop his brother Esau or the threat he had hanging over him. What was most important was missing. When receiving God's order to return to his father's house, Jacob sent everyone ahead of him and he remained alone in the ford of Jabbok, a place cut off by a shallow river. Jacob anguished at the possibility of his death, humbled himself in the presence of God. He was sincere and transparent because he was tired of being who he was. It was at this time that the angel of the Lord appeared to Jacob in that place and Jacob saw an opportunity of being transformed and grabbed it with all his strength and in faith, believing that he could change his identity. He wrestled all night long to lay hold of what he needed most. He inwardly felt his sacrifice. And there in the valley of the Jabbok, he left what he had carried all his life, the pretense and the deception. He no longer needed to hide who he was. What is your name? I am Jacob. At that moment, Jacob was peeling off his old self to put on a new identity given by God. Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Dawn came and he was now a new man. There were no more fears, uncertainty or delusions because he had a personal encounter with God. Boldly, he went to meet Esau, who received him in peace. For Jacob was no longer there, but Israel. Like Jacob, many are weary of the life they live and the past they carry with them and want to get rid of the identity of lies and failure and are willing to fight to have the only one who can transform them from the inside out give them a new name. The Holy Spirit. The Ford of Jabbok, the place of the wrestling with God. our own water coming through the land that we have like the place is amazing i have my family they are all blessed my daughter is about to get married her wedding will be beautiful my son is about to get start college he passed to school college and um, i just purchased another house actually two other houses i have everything i have business i have a blessing life but the most important in our life is the holy spirit 
I have the love of God and I have Him inside of me. That's nothing in this world can buy. The campaign of Israel for me, it's an opportunity to um, prove yourself, but not just that. Don't ask what you want. Let God do what He wants. Just listen and obey. The rest is with Him. And whatever He do, it's always best than what we decided to. The UCKG Helpline Call Center is open 24 hours a day, every day of the week, all year round. If you need help due to a serious problem you may be going through, if you feel that you have nowhere to turn to and desperately need someone to lend a listening ear, then we can help you. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have done, your religion or race. Your call will be answered by someone who genuinely cares about you and have your best interests at heart. We also arrange home visits or the housebounds and hospital visits for anyone in great need of kindly human contact. Whether it is simply information you want or desperately need someone to talk to, we're here for you.